All right, I'd like to call in progress. Uh, I'd like to call the November meeting to order of the Watershed Planning Commission. Uh, first item up, I know we will um, make changes to the agenda or minutes. Uh, do, are there any suggested changes to the agenda or minutes? And if not, can we have a motion to approve the agenda and minutes as presented? Commissioner Beerling, I'll make a motion to approve the agenda as presented. And Commissioner Commissioner Casilius will second that motion. Thank you, Commissioner. I'll do roll. Uh, Commissioner Weaver? Aye. Commissioner Pitt? Aye. Commissioner Casilius? Aye. Commissioner Schmidt? Aye. And Commissioner Beerling? Aye. Thank you, commissioners. Okay, and then moving on to staff reports, and I can't really see the agenda, but my guess is Troy is up first. That's correct. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good afternoon, commissioners. Uh, just reading some highlights from the report that you find in your packets. Uh, just a forward there. Uh, I. I updated the graphs a bit and moved some things around just to try some different um, looks to this. Um, normally, the the cost share fund information is at the end of the report, and I just uh, thought I'd maybe stick it up where we uh, provide other information regarding the technical assistance and cost share program. So now you see the number of service requests there represented over a 13-month period, or two-year period, rather. Um, is the first graph with the blue line showing the number of active service requests. And then the green bar are showing the, the portion of those that are actual projects that are being planned or installed or in the <clears throat> last phases of being certified. Uh, so you can see for the month of uh, October, the last month, which is the November here on the far right-hand side, is uh, we're sitting just below 150 within the Scott WMO. Uh, the cost share funds, uh, the start amount shows how much money we had available starting the beginning of the year uh, between the soil and water and WMO, both our uh, local funds as well as grant funds combined, and then the balance. So the total start amount was a little over 913,000. We're at about 335,000 currently. The next uh, set of um, uh, uh, charts there show what we've encumbered. So the WMO, the soil and water, and then the combined. And then the graph basically shows the percentage of, of those respective uh, funds. So WMO is about 50, soil and water about 95, and the combined we're sitting around 65% or give or take. So this just kind of give you a visual snapshot of where things stand. Some of those funds, or most of them, will um, carry over into next year. So they'll be available as of January 1. And some funds are terminating, and other funds will be coming on board. So the, usually around January 1, we get a reset. Um, soil health and cover crops section dedicated to the, those priorities. Uh, we made some updates to the docket, which we'll review later uh, in the meeting. So those are improving, trying to improve the incentives uh, for soil health practices. Uh, we continue to do some of the work that we've started several years ago in terms of monitoring uh, certain locations and, and cropland where we've had cover crops uh, been monitoring them for a couple of years now and taking soil samples and testing, you know, how the soils are improving over time. Uh, we got a new application for cover crop funding, uh, which I'll report at the end. And then we had four landowners use our no-till drills to put in cover crop seeding this fall. Um, the machinery is actually still out in the field, so the numbers aren't quite final yet. Uh, but you can see from the chart there that we have, we're sitting around a little over 1,200 acres this year that have in, um, participated in our programs. Note, however, that those aren't necessarily all the acres. Those are just the ones that are participating in the program. 
And honestly, we're getting more and more landowners doing that on their own, which is exactly what we want. But we don't track the numbers because obviously you don't have no way to, you know, verify that information. We just know by our interaction with the producers that they've decided to do cover crops on their own. And <clears throat> that's exactly what we want, like I said. Clean water education program. A um, couple items there. We we did uh, assist with that Child Lake seminar that was back in October. Uh, in Prior Lake, we assisted with the uh, cleanup event that they had at uh, Sand Point Beach. Obviously, that's not in the WMO, but <clears throat> Uh, certainly a, an activity that, that we can do anywhere in the county and uh, can expand on that type of support. We've reserved our, our uh, the Cedar Lake Regional Park for next year's Outdoor Education Days. It'll be that last week, last full week in September as it was this year. And then finally, I, I'm happy to announce that um, the uh, the conservation leader that we had in Scott County, uh, Adam Simon, who was featured at the fall tour, you'll remember him, uh, him and his family were there. Uh, they were actually selected as the outstanding conservationists for our area, and that's in the statewide uh, competition. So they'll be at a statewide convention being held the second week in December, and they are in the running for the statewide award. Uh, for those of you who don't recall, we did have a statewide winner, uh, I want to say about 10 years ago. It was John and Mary Whips, uh, who who were um, who live right down south of Jordan on Highway 21. But yeah, that was the last time we had a statewide winner. So it would be nice to see that come around again. Uh, inventory and assessment, uh, we continue to work on the Raven Stream Phase 1. Our target completion is the end of this year, so hopefully we'll get that report, at least a draft form of that, to Ryan and Vanessa uh, not too long from now. Water quality monitoring, I'll just say that we've taken our last round of biweekly and regular samples um, for the Credit River and on Markley Lake, and uh, we basically uh, spent some time removing that equipment at the sites. Uh, and basically winterizing everything. Uh, so we'll be able to get that all that final data over uh, to the WMO fairly soon. Uh, precipitation, moving down to that first uh, graph there, you'll see, uh, as we suspected from our experiences, that the October rainfall was much more significant than our average, um, probably close to three times the average amount, at least that we see here at the Jordan Field Office. So it was a nice, uh, nice and refreshing to see that bounce back. Construction erosion control uh, shows the number of inspections with the bars. So the bar for October, you see, is right around the 300 mark. Uh, so we've had a fairly robust year with inspections, um, and that continued through October. It should die off here coming up November, December, especially. Um, the blue line you see indicates the number of plan reviews. That's kind of an indication of what's coming. Uh, in the future months and year ahead in terms of number of new uh, sites that will be under construction. That number kind of has dipped down since August and stays around that, the, I'd say, 10 to 15 uh, new plan review mark. Uh, Wetland Conservation Act, a um, lot of activity there. Uh, we usually see developers and landowners try to get their uh, wetland permits applications in so they can do the work maybe some planning over the winter uh, before winter sets in. And then I'll skip down to the equipment rental program. You'll see we're sitting at just below 2000 acres. And as I mentioned earlier, the equipment is still out in the field. So the final numbers aren't there. Um, uh, just a word on that though. I don't know as though we'll see the same numbers we've had in the past couple of years. And the reason is that uh, two of our our larger users of the equipment actually bought their own, or one bought their own and one is using one uh, that their neighbor had. So what's happening is kind of, a, um, I guess, consistent with what we're hoping for. And that is that the equipment we provide is, is to have, you know, producers try things and then um, if, if it works for them to really go off on their own. And we see that. 
Some producers in the past years have built their own equipment. Um, this past year, like I mentioned, one, one purchased his own no-till seeder and another is using a neighbor's one that's more convenient. So um, if we see a drop in numbers, it's not that we have less out there. We just have less usage of our available equipment. So I'll just wrap up by mentioning that we had a little over 19,900 payments uh, last month and new applications. We had uh, six new ones, two approvals, a uh, prescribed burn and a pollinator habitat, and then uh, four recommended approvals. And those are, are the re-enrollment projects I think Ryan will be covering later on. So with that, Madam Chair, I'll try to uh, answer any questions. Uh, look. Are you guys not hearing me? I think we lost you for a minute there, Madam Chair, but I hear you again. Oh, okay. Um, let's try this again. I think then we can uh, move on to Vanessa. Sorry about that. Thank you, Madam Chair, um, Commissioners. Uh, I'm just gonna cover one thing briefly simply because we have such a wonderfully large uh, agenda today. And um, that is um, the conversation about uh, WPC commissioners. Uh, as of right now, we actually have uh, two commissioners that will um, no longer uh, be uh, with the WPC at the end of this year. Um, one of them, uh, the term is expiring and um, the other one uh, wanted to continue working on work and uh, will not be able to continue doing work with um, their, hold on one second here. I'm trying to, I'm trying to multitask as we're working. <laughs> one second here, all right. Hopefully you can see my screen. Um, so uh, as I said, so Commissioner Veerling has been with the WPC this round for uh, about as long as his term allows. Uh, we allow kind of three uh, renewals and then you have to take at least one term off before you can come back. Uh, so we put together a little thank you uh, certificate for him um, as well as Commissioner Shea, who uh, regretfully had to step down. Uh, he said he had work commitments that are just taking too much of his time right now and he's not able to continue. So uh, first and foremost, we definitely wanna thank uh, Commissioner Veerling and Commissioner Shea for all their time and effort and hard work and um, staff put together this uh, little thank you poster that kind of, and certificate that kind of explains some of the great projects and accomplishments that they have helped get through over the last, uh, in in Commissioner Veerling's case, several years. Uh, very much appreciate it. Um, however, that does leave us with a bit of a conundrum. Um, the county is very, very low on uh, volunteers uh, this round. Uh, there were many, many commissions and volunteer positions open, and uh, the county actually only had about uh, you just said four applications total, and that's for all the committees and commissions that had openings in the entire county. Um, so uh, the, the volunteer staff is working on putting together new ways to reach out to people and try to get them interested and in hearing about our commissions. Uh, but that still leaves us in, with a little bit of a lull. Uh, we will have two commissioner positions open uh, as of January of 2024, um, where Commissioner Veerling's uh, position was for the Shakopee Basin and Commissioner Shea's position for Sand Creek. So if you know of anybody, please don't hesitate to reach out to them and please suggest that they um, apply for the WPC. Uh, although they closed that original window, we can actually take somebody in at any time at this point. Um, we just get posts to fill. Um, and then um, the, the county staff is is trying to work really hard. Uh, Kara, many of you have met or talked with, uh, trying to help kind of uh, reorganize how they reach out and gain new commissioners. But um, so starting January 2024, we will actually be down to, which will change quorum, of course, because um, we only have five commissioners at that point in time, because we'll have two openings. And so then quorum at that point would be three. And um, 
uh, if you know of anybody, please put the word out. <laughs> and with that, I have any, I'll stand for any questions. Vanessa, about instructions about how people would apply or where they would go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Kerr Mountain, it's, yep, it's right on the Scott County's website. I can send it out to the commissioners afterwards. Um, yes, if you could send the, send the link, that would be wonderful. Yes. Um, absolutely. Uh, it's pretty easy uh, to apply. It's a simple application. You do have to be appointed by the board officially after you go through the application process. Uh, it's it's pretty painless. It, you know, you've all been through it, but um, I will absolutely share that. Thank you. Okay, let me jump back to the agenda here. Commissioner Weaver. Uh, yeah. Commissioner oh, yes. Oh, yes. Sorry. Do, are there other um, questions? That's okay with you. I personally wanted to thank uh, Mark Verley for his years of service. I've been on here a long time also, and I sure have enjoyed his, uh, his insight and his support uh, for the organization. So thank you very much. and appreciate it. And hopefully you can come back sometime. Oops. And, and we do hope he still continues to, to help out with monitoring, of course. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I plan on it. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, okay, ongoing business, our program updates from Ryan. Yeah, Chair, Commissioners, uh, I'll also just say thank you, Commissioner Beerling, for all your, uh, your work through the years. It's uh, greatly appreciated and uh, hope to see you around. Um, just a couple quick items. Oh, one um, technical thing. Uh, so we've got, um, well, there was somebody in the meeting that yeah, they're not here anymore. So there was a, a name that came across as Spencer Vipan. So I was just checking to see who that might be, but it um, does not look like they're in the meeting anymore. So um, I'll continue on with the updates. So one, our CIPs, uh, we, so if you remember, we had an acceptable bid for our Xanadu stream bank project. Uh, we have not started construction on it yet. Um, I am still waiting to get a hold of the project manager. Uh, they are working with Interflu on a current project uh, that's not related to us um, with Vite. And so they've kind of been keeping me in the loop a little bit of what they've heard. And so last update I had was uh, that they were wanting to start between freeze up the ground freezing and January 1st. So um, it's fast approaching. So I would imagine uh, by the next time we meet, which is I think likely January, um, we're well underway for construction. So um, that one's kind of exciting where we're at with things. Pika Creek, uh, we're at 60% design. So uh, SRF just sent me the 60% uh, design plans. I was reviewing them today. I've got a meeting with them later this week to kind of go through those. And then I'll also send them out to the landowners for their comments as well. Um, and I did just um, recently reach out to all the landowners because it had been a couple months since we last went in contact. Um, everybody is good. I sent them example easements just because two of the landowners um, haven't really gone through this process before. And so I just wanted to kind of um, get some of the harder things done sooner. Um, in the event that, you know, maybe the easement thing is something that they're not interested in, I would, I would uh, want to know that sooner rather than later. Um, so they didn't have any questions on the example easements. Uh, obviously, those can change um, from now until when they actually sign them, but at least the ones that um, I sent them out, we were, um, we were good on those. Uh, we'll talk about this, or Vanessa will talk about the budget, but working with SWCD on their 2024 budget, we've kind of been going um, over that in pretty good detail with them. Uh, so feel pretty good there. Uh, at the January meeting, I should have my CIP video. So if you remember at the last meeting, um, Melissa had a video where she was going over some of the activities that she does um, for Scott County. And, and so one of mine is... Um, installing or helping assisting to install CFEs. And so that video should be available in January. And I'll wrap up with saying our Markley Lake uh, flood mitigation project, um, we are in the process of soliciting public input on that. Um, it's actually through a survey uh, right now that we're doing. And then I think the plan after that is to actually hold a, um, a public hearing just to give the public another opportunity to uh, voice their opinions on the study and um, we can take that into consideration. Uh, so with that, I'll, um, I'll stand for any questions.
Thanks, Ryan. I'm I'm blanking on that study. What were the proposed options that we were looking at for that? Madam Chair, so um, we've got, and I'll share the report with the group once um, it's finalized. So we're still, it's still in draft form right now. Okay. Um, but they were looking at um, a pumping option, a gravity option, um, and then also the potential of um, compensatory storage or potential buyout. Um, so there's two properties in particular that seem to be the most affected by uh, the fluctuating water levels of the lake. And so um, all four of those were kind of the alternatives they were looking at. Um, I don't want to, spoiler alert, but uh, a lot of them were not, were not uh, feasible. So there would be quite the cut um, to get gravity flow and it, it's just super costly. Um, and so likely it's, it's probably going more towards the, the pumping, but that's what we're doing the, the public input for. So if the public has, um, you know, suggestions or, or, you know, one way or another that they want it to, to look, then we're going to take that into consideration as well. And that's partly why the report's not done. We want to incorporate that input from the public into the report. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Other questions for Ryan? And I'm looking forward to your video too. I really enjoyed Melissa's. I think those are great that we're doing those. Well, we'll have some fresh, uh, try some fresh pictures and maybe even some video uh, of the construction happening within that video. So, um, awesome. good time, good timing for it. Good, good. All right. Um, hearing no other questions, I think we can move on to Melissa. Thank you, Madam Chair, Commissioners. And before I begin, I just have a couple updates. I want to also say thank you very much, Commissioner Verling, for the time that you've spent and dedication on this committee. It's it's uh, greatly appreciated. And the time that you've spent on um, monitoring the lake for us, that, that data is very valuable. So we appreciate that. And thanks for doing it again next year. <laughs> um, so really quickly, because I have an item later on the agenda, uh, the DNR announced their aquatic invasive species uh, control grant. Um, and I sent those applications in last week for Cedar, McMahon, O'Dowd, and Thowell. Um, we should hear sometime late in December if we uh, one of those lakes are awarded a grant, again, to be able to treat for curly leaf. On October 31st, I attended a meeting with the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency and the DNR regarding the next um, 10-year monitoring cycle for our area. Um, it's called the RAP study or um, uh, watershed restoration and, sorry, I'm drawing a blank. Anyway, um, the last time the um, report came out was 2019. The last monitoring cycle was in 2014 and 2015. So this meeting was to kind of talk about that we're going to be gearing up for that again. Um, there was a lot of different counties and organizations on that meeting. Um, and we'll be meeting again in January, but there's some key information that they wanted us to um, put together for them because um, we can provide a proposal on our monitoring for that project. So they're asking us questions, is there stream reaches that they that we want them to do more stressor ID on. Um, do we have specific monitoring needs in 2025 and 2026, you know, different locations that we might want them to monitor. Um, and so we're gonna be working with the SWCD on um, putting together a plan for that on, on a certain ask. Um, so we'll be meeting again in January. Um, staff is meeting, um, once this week and once next month, we'll be meeting with the SWCD to put together a plan for that proposal. And uh, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens with that next round of monitoring then. Uh, and that's all I have for now. Uh, Madam Chair, if anybody has any questions, I can certainly answer it. Sorry, my mouse wasn't responding. I'm trying to get to the unmute frantically. Um, Questions for Melissa.
I have one. Does the do you go for public input on that wraps and what you'll be looking at? Um, well, the PCA will eventually when they have a draft plan on. Now, as far as you know, deciding where to monitor, there is no public input process for that. Uh, well, actually, the public input process is the organizations okay. uh, that they're asking that input for. But the general public, no, not until the actual report is in draft form. Okay. Um, I'm not sure that this will um, come into play with the wraps, but just FYI for you guys, um, low flows is becoming much more of a buzzword <laughs> and is kind of creeping up everywhere. Um, and just as a side note, Bowser's kind of figuring out how to address that um, and how how we even want to speak to that and about that. But one of the things that is being looked at is how any of these other plans, the wraps, the one watershed, one plants, any of those can, can kind of contribute to how we look at low flows. So I don't know, just as kind of a heads up, it'd be something that it would be nice if we could get ahead of if we're, um, can somehow think about that. But let me know, we can talk at a different time about it too, if that helps. Yeah, that sounds good. Too. Um, other questions for Melissa? Okay, um, one watershed, one plan update. So I was actually intended to go back and look at my schedule because I don't think we met in between our last two meetings because we had this meeting just a few days after the last one watershed, one plan meeting. But maybe Commissioner Pent or Melissa, you can correct me if I'm wrong there, but I don't think we have any updates. Commissioner Weaver, this is Commissioner Payne. No, I, I agree with you. I, I have no, really, no update. Okay. Okay. So unless there are questions, we can move on from that. Pause just a moment. Okay. Not hearing anybody jump in. So um, let's move on to new business. And it looks like the tax document. Madam Chair, Commissioner, so if you remember at our last uh, meeting, we presented the uh, 2024 cost share manual uh, with the revisions in it. And the idea being that if any questions um, came up or any further clarification was needed or any revisions, that then we had this November meeting um, before then the uh, Scott County WMO board would take action on it in December. And we did have one uh, item that came up, and that was in regards to the install credit. So if you remember, <clears throat> just to kind of give you some background on it, this was the item where uh, landowners could potentially take the option of not going through the application um, in lieu of uh, uh, just working directly with the SWCD on some of these costs. So, um, the question that came up was, you know, what specific practices would this apply for? What are the, the units that we're looking at? What's the maximum amounts? And so Troy was kind enough to put together this table. And this table is basically, he's pulled everything um, from within the docket and put it in one spot of where this install credit could apply to. And so uh, on the left, we've got the practices, um, and then the component of what part of that practice we're specifically talking about. And then as it moves through, um, you know, the units, the costs, and then the maximum amounts. So I think that was uh, fairly important for um, kind of that clarification on what are we looking at? What's the max dollars that could potentially um, go to this? So for the most part, if you go to the far right column, um, uh, Fairly, I mean, most of these things are within a couple thousand dollars. Um, you do notice the cover crop on top is um, can can get up there um, to a higher dollar amount. Uh, however, um, at the very end here, we've got what we proposed is for this year, kind of easing into this and um, maybe just going with the ten percent of our local general fund that could apply for this install credit. So what's being proposed for the cost share dollars for the local general fund is 200,000 to 10%, we're looking at $20,000. Um, 
So even though this cover crop would allow it to go up to the max, in theory, we couldn't. We couldn't um, put that much towards any one project. So what we're kind of looking at, and, and probably more so um, if somebody's going to go the cover crop route, it's probably more of like a one year, they're trying it in a few hundred dollars or maybe low thousands of dollars is, is probably who would be looking at, um, at using this potential opportunity. So I guess I first wanted to just stop there and see if there were any questions or concerns or you know thoughts on this. Um, before there were just a couple of minor other updates that I wanted to pass along as well. Any questions for Ryan? At least on this part. Okay, I think you're good to keep going. All right, so um, just a couple other items. So there were minor changes and like clarifications. I figured uh, we probably don't need to go through those. However, there were a couple other changes that I think are worth um, noting. So scroll down here. And Troy, you can chime in at any point too, but you did give me kind of an update on some of these. So uh, 2.9, this was at three years for um, the violation to be ongoing, and, and so no older than three years, to align with uh, more typical statute of limitations we're bumping it up to 10 years. So basically um, what this section um, is in regards to is that if somebody comes to us looking to do a cost share, they have to be compliant with all of these um, uh, regulations, uh, statutes that are out there so that are environmental related. And so instead of a violation only being three years, we're bumping it up to, it has to be um, ongoing and not older than 10 years. Um, so that one I thought we could um, share with the group. Um, and then also there was an update to a specific practice. Bear with me as I scroll through. Um, so this got modified a little bit. Um, it was at, it's a reduced flat rate from five cents per square foot to a thousand um, per acre. So, I mean, a fairly minor change, but it is a, it's a dollar change. And so I figured it's at least worth um, bringing up. Um, and then also with this same item, what it does is it, this was at 1500 that somebody could apply for. And now it's bumped up to 2000 for the natural landscaping project. So, you know, fairly minor in the whole scheme of things, but it is a, it is a change. Um, and then one final one, is just so you can see the language itself where we say we're going to keep it at the 10% um, of the budget. So this is our um, section that uh, this is the WMO appendix. So it's specific to anything we want that's different than maybe other entities in the county that are using this docket. So this is in relate, um, related to the install credit. So the 10% of the local general fund. So what we've got is in 2024, we're gonna start out with that. It could adjust. I mean, maybe we find one way or the other, you know, we uh, wanna make an adjustment to that, but for this year, we're capping it at that 10,000 or 10%. So I figured we didn't wanna go through the whole docket again, since we already did that um, in much greater detail at the last meeting. Uh, so generally speaking, the rest of it um, is largely the same as the other meeting. Like I said, there could be little clarifications here and there, but. Um, those were all the more substantial, I guess, changes that are being proposed. So with that, I'll stand for any questions. All right, any questions for Ryan? And one thing I will uh, add is this is an action item. So we would be looking for a recommendation from the WPC um, before we could take it to the WMO board. Okay, so then we'll be looking for a motion to approve changes as edited um, to be passed along to the WMO board. And you're correct. Do we have a motion? Commissioner Weaver, this is Commissioner Fan. I'd move so. All right, do we have a second? Mr. Schmidt, I'll make all second that motion. Thank you, Commissioners. I'll do roll call. Commissioner Weaver? Aye. Commissioner Pitt? Aye. 
Commissioner Casilius? Aye. Commissioner Schmidt? Aye. And Commissioner Vierling? Aye. Thank you, Commissioners. All right, that is passed. Thanks for your work on that, you guys. Uh, up next, we got Ryan again with the fish survey report. Madam Chair, Commissioner, so uh, we did discuss this at the last meeting as well. Um, we actually have the finished report now from Mount Hood Environmental. Um, like we talked about at the previous meeting, um, and it, it, they actually did a really fantastic job on this report. I, I would not have guessed it would have ended up being, I think it's like around 12 pages long um, for the, the report. Um, so Sean, the, the rep that we're working with, did a great job. Um, a lot of good graphs that, that really make it a quick, easy visual thing where you can see the diversity being different downstream of the waterfall versus upstream. Um, on average, you can see in his graphs, the larger fish were uh, more prevalent downstream of the waterfall versus, um, and I can even highlight some of these so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Um, so yeah, it, the report turned out really well. And then also we've got um, just a, kind of a next steps, you know, what we're looking at. So here, here's one where it shows downstream um, the uh, standardized catch, so the amount that they caught. Um, so you can just see that so many more species were found downstream. There was 33 species downstream, I think 13 species upstream. Over 2,000 fish were recorded. So it was, it was a pretty intensive uh, effort. Um, and so I liked how they laid it out here, which makes it easy to just visually see it. And then this is where they do a breakdown of the size um, of the fish and it's broken down by just game fish. So taking out your Johnny darters and shiners and, and some of those. So upstream, we just had two um, that, that, uh, that were found and then downstream, you can just see there was uh, quite a bit. Um, and this is where obviously the larger species were too. So um, really good job on the, the graphs, uh, next steps. So what um, Sean and I have been kind of discussing is, you know, what, what do we do now? And so kind of our hunch, um, at least with this first round of surveys was confirmed that there is a difference. And so now it's, um, there's a whole lot of things that we have to go through and that's, um, you know, can this actually work? You know, can we actually do either a fish ladder or potential stocking upstream of the, uh, the dam? And um, lots of questions, you know, are, are raised. And so um, one thing that we've talked about is instead of maybe always doing just a fish survey, we have to also see is there habitat that's suitable for these fish to survive in the upper reaches of Sand Creek. And so um, we're kind of thinking that might be where we might go in 2024, that we might look at more of a habitat assessment and kind of check that off the list to see um, if that's a possibility. We also want to check at different times of the year, you know, are there, are there fish um, where we found them right now, you know, in Sand Creek, or are they all going down to the river? Um, in the spring, are there more diversity of fish than the 33 species that we found that move up. And maybe by the time we were collecting in, in August and, or July, um, that, that maybe they had already moved down from there. So a whole lot of things that we have to kind of um, look at. Um, we're also kind of talking to the DNR, NPCA on permitting, um, just kind of seeing what that looks like and if there's any potential red flags or hurdles that we have there. Um, so um, this is just kind of the first step in, in um, probably a lengthy process of, of kind of looking to see, can this actually work? So, um, but wanted to share the report with you first. Uh, we probably won't get a report every year um, just because what we're thinking is to maybe do this in phases and after the habitat assessment and then different timings of the year for surveys, maybe doing a report at the end. Um, so, you know, we're not budgeting a, a lot for this effort on an annual basis. And so that's why I think we've got to probably take it in phases. And then that last phase will be an all encompassing report and um, see where that, that takes us. So I uh, just want to share this with you. And, and if you have any questions, uh, you're here to answer them. 
Thanks, Ryan. Um, where is that dam again? Can you pull it up on a map or is that yeah. just side of Jordan? Absolutely. Um, bear with me here. One second, I got it. Oh, you got it? Okay. Yeah, I caught the I I caught the request. I just gotta share my screen. Where ah, I saw the chat going, so yeah. Hold on one second. <clears throat> That is a great question, Commissioner Weaver. Um, Madam Chair, uh, can everybody see my my computer here? Yes. Perfect. So um, you can actually, it's actually flowing here. Um, this is the dam right here, which uh, it's right by the park here. Uh, but as point of reference, if you, if you zoom out a bit. <laughs> um, so this is where the, it's right there. Um, this is uh, 169. And this is kind of down, this is kind of downtown Jordan. Well, I guess technically downtown Jordan is kind of more here. Um, this is kind of the, sorry, this is going to be my reference for Jordan. I apologize, Ryan. Uh, this is where like Caribou is and the grocery store. Um you know, the kind of the historic part, but then there's the large park within Jordan that has all of the um, amenities there. And um, the dam is just kind of right there in the park. So when we say upstream, we actually are referencing upstream of the dam and the park and then downstream as well. There goes the river. Can turn on. Commissioner, we, uh, this is uh, Commissioner Pant. Uh, Two comments. One is, if you haven't been there, Rita, it's really a very, very nice site. Um, the mill pond is right there. There's a beautiful park. There's a water park for kids. And the dam is really very impressive in the springtime, especially when it's flowing nicely. It's, it's very, very impressive to see uh, the waterfall coming off the dam there. So um, that's very nice to see. And then uh, uh, for Ryan, I just an observation. I didn't realize that for a big portion of the life of that dam, there actually was a fish ladder. And I didn't realize that that fish ladder was there until we had the blowout flooding, I think back in the early 60s, I think is when it was, when it went out. Um, so it's kind of interesting that there was a fish ladder. Madam Chair, Commissioner Pint, yes. I find that fascinating as well. And I think that would be part of the, the argument of putting one back in. Um, in, in you know times are different in in where um in the report he references it you know they're talking about where they actually noticed differences in fish populations and so you know maybe their livelihoods were kind of more affected by that um whereas probably that's not the case anymore but nonetheless still kind of interesting that there was one for a long time and it just never got reconstructed again Yep. And then again, just for a point of reference. So, you know, here's where it is on Sand Creek. This here is the Minnesota River. It's the big river, right? And then as far as reference to the whole Sand Creek Basin within Scott County, it's obviously getting getting down to the, to the end. So there's still quite a lot of upstream, obviously, of this fish ladder. The, the, the bulk of Sand Creek is obviously upstream of the dam. Uh, but this reach between, you know, the dam and the Minnesota River is a, a pretty busy section. But obviously, most people live back here. This is more industrial and generally speaking, and commercial. If that's helpful. That is. Thank you. And I have not been out there. So, yeah, I'll have to go check it out for sure. Other questions for Ryan on this study? Okay, hearing none, looks like we can move on to um, Vanessa with the levy information or action item. Thank you, Madam Chair Commissioners. Yes, this is always the highlight of the year, um, looking at uh, the final levy recommendation for the board for the WMO, as well as the final proposed budget. So again, just a reminder, we do this every year. At the end of the year, you set the preliminary levy that gets posted for comment uh, back in September. And then between September and now, we do any final adjustments to that proposed levy and draft budget to come up with the final budget. 
and final levy for the year. Um, this case in this year, when we got the final what if tax statement, so basically the tax department um, runs uh, what we know about the taxing information at that moment and what property values are worth, and that can change uh, the impact to everybody's uh, home values. So sometimes if I bring in a proposed budget at maybe like a 3% a increase when I do the proposed levy um, and taxes go down, uh, during the preliminary what if statement that I receive, uh, when taxation gives me the final one, sometimes it actually changes. And even though it's still 3% that I'm asking for, uh, it may have a, a change in impact. In this case, the, it had kind of a different effect. And um, the final what if tax statement uh, we received from um, taxation actually gave us a bit more wiggle room in the budget, uh, which was nice because it allowed us to dip a little less into our fund balance reserves. And so the main difference between the preliminary levy and the final proposed levy and budget is that we went from a 1.5% increase request to a 2.75% increase request uh, because that still allowed us to get a bit more uh, necessary dollars, uh, but um, still stay under uh, uh, any actual major tax impacts. So even though we're asking for more, there are actual, it's actually a decrease to the homeowners and the property owners. So that's usually the thing most people look at. Uh, but uh, to summarize what we actually are doing with all that great, wonderful proposed levy and budget, uh, obviously we always focus on most critical items first. And if we feel like there's enough room to do any extra, we will do that as well. In this case, the bulk of what's critical is getting those CIPs in and getting um, preparing for the next plan year. And so we didn't really go outside of what's most important. Uh, but to summarize, uh, we are asking to review the final 2024 proposed levy and budget for the Scott WMO, Special Taxing District, and to consider a final levy recommendation to the board. So that is the action item. To meet our existing grant obligations, achieve our watershed management plan goals, and just maintain our current service level, uh, we are proposing a levy of 1434516 and a budget of total of 2520663 some of those key factors influencing our 2024 budget include um, generally knowing that our overall revenue kind of remains lower when compared to the past 10 years. However, our grant reimbursement timing is going uh, to our benefit this year. So our 2024 revenue is expected to be approximately 143000 higher than compared to 2023. The proposed levy increase is 2.75%, which is still below the amount proposed in the approved 2019 to 2026 watershed management plan. Uh, this is actually in line with the Scott WMO and county policy for levy increase. The proposed 2024 levy is 1.4 million, generally compared to the 2023 levy of 1.396 million an increase of $38,393 to be specific. Uh, tax impact, as far as rates are concerned, uh, tax rate will actually be a decrease of 0.001%. We're going from 0.929% uh, to 0.928%, or flat if you like to round. I like to round, so I'll, you know. Um, I look at it that way too sometimes. Uh, it is an average market value decrease for property owners of 4.84 to down to 40.64. So just a little bit of a decrease, but a decrease nonetheless. The draft budget remains 72% land and water treatment, which is always one of our goals is to keep that above 70% because that shows that we're putting a lot of our money back into the hands of the landowners to help do the work that we need to get done because we obviously don't own property. So uh, if our landowners uh, aren't able to make those projects happen, then we don't get all the great work done that we need to get done. Uh, grant reimbursements are projected to be $350,000. Uh, however, some of that we are anticipating to be a uh, reimbursement for the McMahon uh, grant uh, bonding bill from through the SWCD. That's always a question whether or not it'll happen, but there, uh, because that grant agreement would have to be certified and signed by 2020, the end of 2024, um, there is a strong likelihood that that reimbursement would be able to come through next year. 
cost share demand has slowed down a little bit. Uh, the current budget is uh, near a very dedicated baseline fund for the tax program based upon that somewhat slowing demand. Uh, so again, we always want to keep the projects coming in and the program moving along. And so we feel like at this point, we're pretty confident at what we're dedicating and staffing towards that pro program, but obviously it's something we'll want to take a look at in, in the next few years to make sure that we're still on track for what we hope to accomplish. Uh, the program areas expected to be reduced for 2024 include administration, regulation, coordination, and maintenance, and that is because the focus for the next couple of years is the CIP program and the plan update. So that means that there is an anticipated $169,000 increase to land and water treatments targeted projects. This is very similar to last year in order to complete design and installation of Xanadu Stream Bank stabilization and the Pika Creek Ravine stabilization, as well as some of those structural practices identified in the WBIF and Nine Elements grants. Uh, the actual, as Brian said, they hope to, you know, begin actual construction of Xanadu uh, coming up here pretty quick. Uh, the likelihood of receiving any bills and paying those out uh, in 2023 is almost zero at this point in time. So we're projecting that to go out next year. Um, there is an anticipated $172,500 increase to monitoring. Um, that is a pretty heavy load, and that is mostly to uh, help us inform the next planning cycle as identified in the watershed management plan. So specifically, again, as we mentioned earlier, uh, at the preliminary levy, the year is $225,000 uh, specifically for Sand Creek monitoring, uh, as well as others. There is an anticipated $62,500 increase to inventory and data analysis, once again, to help inform the plan um, and complete a couple of the last few items in the current watershed management plan. And that includes a University of Minnesota social attitude survey, which we did previously and we committed to redoing again. Um, and that's about $50,000. A multi-purpose ditch assessment for probably uh, County Ditch 4 uh, for $35,000. Again, that was identified in the plan and we commit to doing that. And then Credit River monitoring data analysis for $40,000 and Raven Stream uh, subwater set assessment, the other half of that, which Troy mentioned earlier. There is an anticipated $20,000 increase to planning for dedicated staff time towards the watershed management plan update process. Uh, the previous plan uh, usually budgeted about $35,000 to $40,000 of staff time during the planning process. Uh, we're a little under that. Um, we'll probably ramp up a little bit even more next year. It is a heavy load for a few years, um, but uh, it is a short-term heavy lift. And then finally, it's anticipated that there will be a maximum deficit of uh, $701,853 in 2024. Um, that is actually $40,000 less than the preliminary budget, again, because we were able to kind of tweak uh, the proposed tax increase uh, just to accommodate a little bit of a smaller dip. Uh, again, the deficit as last year was partially planned as it takes time to save funds to implement some of those large CIPs. Um, it's also partially due to some of those slower moving grants uh, that must be completed in 2024. So that difference is proposed to come out of the restricted fund balance. The SWMO has been set aside for the CIPs uh, and we will still be fine with our fund balance reserves allowing us uh, enough buffer in case any urgent issues come about. Uh, if you could scroll down to the budget table, please. So as it stands, I always just like to put things in numbers for people who just like numbers. That's just fine. Uh, we've got the final levy and budget table. So again, just having you look again, just kind of comparing the approved 2022, approved 2023, and what's finally being proposed for 2024. Um, and with that, I stand for any questions. Questions for Vanessa. And I believe this is an action item. So we will be looking to approve the final levy and budget and to be passed on to the um, WMO for final approval. 
That is correct, Madam Chair Commissioners. The WPC is tasked with making the final recommendation for the levy and budget uh, for the board to final approve. Okay. So yeah, let me restate. The motion would be to recommend approval to the WPC. Thank you. Commissioner Weaver, this is Commissioner Pint. I would uh, move that the Watershed Planning Commission recommend to the WMO board approval of the 2024 final levy and budget as presented to at our meeting today. Thank you, Commissioner Pint. Do we have a second? This is Commissioner Casilius. I'll second the, the motion to um, move the budget forward for a final approval. Thank you, Commissioners. I will do roll. Uh, Commissioner Weaver? Aye. Commissioner Pitt? Aye. Commissioner Casilius? Aye. Commissioner Schmidt? Aye. And Commissioner Veerling? Aye. Thank you, Commissioners. All right. Thanks so much. Thank you. Um, looks like we got four tax applications up for um, action items next. So can we move to approve all these at the same time at the end or do we need to do them individually? <laughs> Looks like you're maybe thinking, Vanessa. If, if, if we don't think we can, that's fine. I just thought I'd throw it out there. You can. I, I had to think about our policies. You can. Um, you'd have to be clear in the motion for all four. But yes, absolutely, Madam Chair Commissioners, you can do that. Okay. I propose then that we have Ryan start and we we'll pause at the end for questions or comments on each. And then we move to approve or not approve all four um, and say there's one we don't want to approve, we can just put that in the motion too. So with that, um, Ryan, you're up. Madam Chair, Commissioners. Uh, so I'll start out with just then general information that would apply to all four of them. And then we can get into specifics um, if, uh, if any of the commissioners would like to. So uh, number one, if you remember through our current comprehensive water resources plan, um, we don't have a huge emphasis on re-enrollment projects. Um, however, there is a need um, at times um, that some of these projects in particular are of high value to us. And so what we've done is kind of come up with a process where um, we're looking at these projects as they are expiring and kind of um, selecting the ones that meet certain criteria. So being closer to um, prominent water bodies. Uh, so, you know, that that it's not hundreds of, you know, feet away or thousands of feet away um, where, where we're not really seeing, a, you know, maybe a, a ton of that benefit. Although they might have been eligible, the idea is to free up more funds for new projects and try to incentivize change rather than sustain it. So we do carve out a portion of our budget uh, for the re-enrollment. Um, it's a small fraction of uh, um, what we've got. And actually, we aren't going to, what we're proposing is to not even use the full amount that these four uh, projects kind of met that criteria, high benefits. You'll notice that with each of these, they're really high benefits. They're really close to receiving waters. Um, but then there was a kind of a cutoff um, where the projects um, beyond these four uh, really maybe weren't weren't so beneficial that we would uh, be interested in re-enrolling them. And so the budget for the year was 25,000 and um, all four of these combined are 18,900. So it still leaves us a little over 6,000 that could be then used for new projects. We could, um, it, it could just roll over into a new project. We, we kind of set our own um, budgets within um, that land and water treatment. And so, um, so yeah, we'll, we're, we've got another meeting this week where we might be able to then use that, those funds for another project. So, oh, and then the other thing too, as Troy mentioned in his report, these were all screening committee recommendations. So they did all go to the SWCD meeting on November 16th and were recommended for approval. 
The difference is now, um, obviously, they're all located in different spots, different acreages, um, different water bodies. Uh, but one thing that is still somewhat common is they all have the same uh, rate that they're looking at, minus one minor detail on two of them. So Darren Wagner's would be one. The re-enrollment rate is half the new rate. So our new rate is $200 an acre. Re-enrollment is half of that. Um, you'll notice that he's got 3.9 acres, but the amount that he's applying for is 3,800. And that's because 3.7 acres were eligible for the re-enrollment rate for a filter ship. However, 0.2 acres um, were not eligible for the higher rate. They were eligible for a one-time payment rate of 500 an acre. So then those, um, those 0.2 acres amount for that, that, um, that difference. So that's why you'll notice on two of them, the acres, 3.9 doesn't line up. It's not 3,900. Um, so I can kind of show you where they're located. Um, so Darren Wagner's New Market Township, um, it's a private ditch that eventually then flows into uh, County Ditch 6. Um, and then we've got Lee Rademacher, uh, 2.6 acres. So here, the 2.6 acres lines up with the 2,600. Um, his is located uh, in Belle Plaine Township. Um, it's an unnamed tributary that eventually then flows into Sand Creek. It's just kind of south of the city of Jordan. Uh, Maynard Schmidt, he's out in Blakely Township. Um, so he's got, um, this is the other one where it's got the different rates. So 8.4 acres are eligible for the re-enrollment and then 3.8 acres are eligible for the one time 500. Um, so he's got a series of uh, filter strips. So the areas that would um, be outside of the re-enrollment rate is where you can see kind of that lime green where it's bigger. So the filter strips are really designed to be smaller strips of land, however, um, when you originally sign them up, there's kind of an infeasible um, to farm component of it. So if uh, a, you know, a tractor really can't get in and out of an area, like in particular here, if you can see my mouse um, kind of in that southeast corner, if you got two strips through there and it just leaves a little bit of ag land, um, they do allow for that. They call it infeasible to farm and you can enroll the whole thing. However, that's the portions that get the lower rate as we're re-enrolling them because they, albeit they are doing some of the um, filtering, um, the, the best bang for our buck is just that strip um, where it's a, kind of a smaller smaller strip um, of native vegetation or perennial vegetation. Um, so that's uh, unnamed tributaries to the Minnesota River um, being out in Blakely Township. And the last one is Joe Menke. He's in Sand Creek Township, 2.2 uh, acres. And then um, once again, this is a uh, ditch that eventually then flows into Sand Creek. Um, so uh, if there's anything specific, um, I can go through them individually. Uh, otherwise, I may answer any other questions. Questions? Yeah, Jeff, you questions or re requests that we go into more detail on each individually? Okay, hearing none, we will need a recommendation to approve all four um, or that we, we have funding go to all four as proposed. Commissioner Schmidt, I'll make that motion. Right, do we have a second? This is Commissioner Casilius, I'll second that motion to approve. All right, commissioners, I will do roll uh, for the motion to approve all four tax applications as proposed. Commissioner Weaver? Aye. Commissioner Pitt? Aye. Commissioner Casilius? Aye. Commissioner Schmidt? Aye. And Commissioner Veerling? Aye. Thank you, commissioners. All right, wonderful. Looks like the new logo is up next, Melissa. All been waiting for. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Ryan, do you want to share that uh, the slides I sent you? Yeah, that's good. Perfect. 
if you can, yeah, there we go. Okay, just as a reminder, this is our current logo. We've had this for about 23 years. And just to make sure I was correct on the history of that, I actually got a hold of Jackie Fuhrer. I am sure Commissioner Print, you probably remember Jackie. Um, and how this was created was basically when uh, Dr. Don Gibbs was here as the administrator, she just had Jackie find um, that waterfall. I'm not quite sure what it's supposed to be, if that's a heron or what, but she found free clip art on the internet and she kind of put this together herself. So we've been using this for quite some time and thought it'd be nice to, to upgrade. So <laughs> The moment that not everyone's been waiting for. If you want to go to the next slide. So this is our new logo. Um, so just to kind of explain some things on it, um, we really wanted to have a different color scheme than you know a lot of WMLs and WDs have kind of the same blue, green, and orange color. And we worked with the <laughs> um Studio Lola, Jamie from Studio Lola on some different color schemes. We originally asked for some jewel tones to see that or some like autumn colors. Um, and staff kind of settled on this. Uh, Vanessa had this cool idea to incorporate contour lines. Um, so I actually took different clips of contour lines throughout different areas of the WMO and sent them to the graphic artist. And so I'm not sure which one she ended up using, but she incorporated that into this. The icon um, kind of swooping across it there is representative of the most common tree in the Scotch of Mall, which is the fir oak. Um, got that information from Willie Peters, by the way. Uh, and we kind of went with a kind of a, a clean font for it, something that was just kind of timeless, but we all kind of liked the idea of how she made the word watershed stand out. Um, and then Ryan, if you want to go to the next slide, we'll show you it side by side with the um, Scott County logo itself. And Chair Commissioners, hold on, it is not moving here. Let me escape. No. Sorry, I, oh, here we go. There we go. So uh, we really liked how she kind of made the same curve to the icon in WMO new logo with the Scott County logo. It's got that same curve to it. So we thought that that was um, kind of a cool idea that she incorporated into that. Um, so, we got one more slide for you. We also had her, she finished developing some letterhead for us. So I'm going to show you one version here that I think would be, you know, nice to use for the WPC agendas. Um, and Ryan, if you click on it, they can kind of see the outline. It's just a, oh shoot, it doesn't work when you, sorry. In the slide itself, um, it's just a JPEG that I, took a screenshot of, but um, it's hard to see, but there is in the header, there's kind of the contour lines as well. Um, so I, I picked this version to show you to put the agenda on, but we do have a formal version that only has the, the letterhead and then the address at the top, um, a very clean version. And then we have another version that's a little bit more fun that has a footer at the bottom that has the same uh, curved lines as the leaf with the different color um, scheme in it. Um, so, so we're really excited uh, to have a new logo. Um, curious to hear feedback from all of you, but um, starting in January 2024, you know, we would like to start using this new logo. Um, we need to get a recommendation from you today on um, moving this forward to the county board for final approval. Um, so this is an action item and we're asking for a recommendation. Um, but I would love to hear feedback on, on what you think as well. And then, thank you, Melissa. I will add a few, a few other background pieces of information. Thank you for all that. Uh, if you could go back, Ryan, one slide to the side-by-side. 
So one of the one of the reasons for us doing this now this is a small project this isn't a major endeavor and we never wanted it to be one uh, but our our previous logo. Uh, because it was created the way that it was, it's very hard to work with and really hard for us to use in professional documents, like obviously things like agendas, memos, official letters to state agencies, uh, residents, um, any of our official plans or reports. It's, it's very challenging to work with and um, nearly impossible almost. Uh, and at the same time, with the plan update coming up, um, we really needed to come up with uh, just some uh, updated uh, logo and just coloring in, and branding information um, and materials that are just, again, easier to work with, more readable for the public, easier for the public to utilize and interact with. And so part of updating the logo is really honestly just updating our materials so that they're current with existing technology. Um, as boring as that sounds, that was probably one of the major drivers for this endeavor. Uh, and so by doing it now, it allows us to incorporate it, like, yes, into our annual report, but also into the upcoming plan update um, and, and give us that just general day to day working capability. And as Melissa said, it was very important to staff that we paid homage to uh, the Scott County uh, logo as well. Obviously, the WMO does need its own logo because it's its own entity, but we also recognize that we are also a part of the county, right? And we wanted to be able to show that tie-in with that swoop and um, the correlation of, of correlating colors. They're not exact, but they are, are very similar. Um, and to us, that was important. So I just wanted to add those two little pieces as well. Commissioner Weaver, this is Commissioner Pint. Um, I'll make just a couple of quick comments. First of all, I, I do really like the work that's been done. I, and specifically what I like is kind of tying it to the county. I like the, the, the same curvature so that looks nice. It kind of goes along well with the county logo. I like the uh, bur oak leaf because it's it's a dual meaning. It's obviously a bur oak leaf, but it's also uh, a kind of a mini watershed, right? With the contours there and the sand creek flowing right down through that watershed kind of thing, which I really, really like. Um, I like the cleanness of it. Uh, it. This would be like a super minor, minor negative. Uh, I'm curious as to why you picked a particular font size that you did for Scott because it looks so almost overpowering, whereas I like the logo and I like the Watershed Management Organization, but Scott looks just a little bit too too overpowering and it kind of infringes on the on the graphics a little bit, but that, it's minor. So all in all, very good. And I would recommend approval if, you know, if you're not open to any modifications. So I gotta say, Commissioner Penn, I, so, same thing. I love it, love it, love it. I love, my favorite is the color scheme. Like, I just think it's wonderful. But I had the same thought about Scott. Like, it's just so big. And I was almost wondering if you could do something like half as tall, but black or emphasize something like that, that that might just not be such the centerpiece. Because, and this is, <laughs> this is the way I see it too. It's one of those words that if you keep looking at, it looks weirder and weirder. You know what I mean? Like Scott, it just looks weird. Like it's like, is that really spelled right? Like, and so it makes me do that more with that black, just Scott there. But I, I love it. I love the sheet, the shape of the leaf, the contours. I totally want to know where those contours are in the county. Like we have to have that in our history somewhere and have that down. That is such a nice touch in the color scheme. And yeah, that would be only my tiny complaint too. Same as Commissioner Pitts. <clears throat> Thank you. This is Commissioner Casilius. I, I just have a couple of comments too. And, and first of all, I, I'm, I worked my whole career in marketing, so I've done many logo designs and I know what a painful process it can be to please everybody. Um, it, and it's hard to, it's hard to just look at one when I didn't have the opportunity to see what, what the other ones in the consideration set might've been. Um, I guess I, I'm not fond of the leaf overlapping the type in Scott. And so maybe, I don't know, maybe if the S was like in the other logo, if the S was a, a capital and the other ones were smaller or something, that might address the size of that word and, and not overlap the colors. And then my other question is, will this logo ever have to be printed in black alone or some black gray and gray gradation? 
That is an excellent question, Commissioner and Commissioners. Uh, yes, there is a black, white, uh, gray um, variation of it, uh, and it, it turns out fine that way too. Um, we can obviously move forward with the, the logo um, and obviously make some tweaks to the word Scott to either make it smaller, capital, and 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 font. We could have variations of the logo as well, obviously. Um, one we'd probably use more than others, but um, those are all really great thoughts and recommendations. But uh, so yes, there is a, a black and white or grayscale variation because obviously we know there are things that we have to do that are printing just in black and white, or people might print something from ours uh, in black and white. So, and we didn't actually do many, many variations, um, which is actually a, a great thing to point out. Again, we uh, budgeted a very small amount for this and the work plan and budget that you had all approved earlier for this year. Um, we didn't want to make this a giant project or a giant undertaking uh, because we have so much other great work to, you, to do. So um, because we made it such a small project and we didn't actually do many, many, many. <laughs> Um, some many entities, I've done this with many entities and, and it can creep and become this huge endeavor. And we were, were probably just a little more simple. We just wanted to do something simple uh, and small. So uh, we didn't go for the multiple version versions. Uh, so uh, that is also though a great, a great question. Uh, but yes, we can always send out the black and white grayscale versions as well as well as you know, size down the word Scott uh, to make it less formidable. Is that the right word? I don't know if that's the right word, but. Um... <laughs> Madam Chair, I do think Troy put his hand up. I saw I wondering if yes. he had something. So sorry, Troy, did you want to jump in? Oh, no, no problem. Um, I just want to comment that. Um, I'll proudly affix this to the many documents we put together for the WMO. I think it's a, a great improvement. Um, along the lines of uh, Commissioner Penn, I, I kind of agree on the Scott thing. It, it does come up um, strong. I think you got to get used to it, and it might be fine. And I wasn't sure at first if it was a if it was a navy blue Scott or if it was a black. Because I'm just wondering if you made it that navy blue and it kind of matched the color in the leaf, consistent with how the browns are copied down, if that would lighten it a bit, you know, if it was just that navy blue color versus the solid black. That would have been my only comment, but otherwise I think it's great. <laughs> Actually a great thought, because it would also, how the Scott County logo, the word Scott, the color blue, is the same as the blue of the cityscape. If we tied the blue of the water to the blue of the sky, it would make that an additional correlation between the two. And maybe you could play between having like the word Scott be that brown and then the water shed be the blue. You know, just different ways to look at that. But I'll shut up now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll add to it. I'm sorry to disagree, Commissioner Con Commissioner Casillas, and I do not have a background in marketing. So for what it's worth, I liked how the the leaf kind of overlaid and went behind the um, text, you know, because you're kind of doing both. And I thought that was pretty neat how it kind of mixed it up a little bit. But again, they're just all suggestions, so no, no yeah. offense taken. It's a, you know, there there could be a million different choices. And I and in with regards to Troy's comment with if if Scott perhaps was in navy or or maybe brown with watershed and blue or whatever, that might make the size of that word less. Um, I don't want to say offensive. It's not offensive, but just like it, you know, it's sort of shocking maybe. And maybe maybe a, a change to that uh, color would help minimize the size of the font. Yeah, and that's why I really like the navy too, because it um it, it's almost like overbearing the Scott. But if making the color change, it might tie it back in more and not make it like so overbearing for the whole logo. Okay. So I would say we're maybe not ready to recommend approval for this yet. Can we go see a couple of these tweaks, or can we look at a couple of these tweaks? Uh, Madam Chair, Commissioners, you can do anything you want. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You Ooh, are more right. 
<laughs> we, we are happy to always go back and work on anything you folks ever want us to. That's what your job is. So absolutely, we're we're happy to to take it back and make some tweaks. And um, uh, we did have a little bit of uh, some funds uh, in the proposed budget for uh, uh, Studio Lola. Sorry, it took me a second there uh, for next year. So as you've already approved a recommendation to the board to continue working uh, for those funds, there are there will be funds there as well. Otherwise, I would say the funds are gone. We've used them all. Uh, but in fact, we still have funds then with that. So, yeah. Commissioner Weaver, this is Commissioner Pinch. Um, yes, I think that's a good suggestion. What I would like to suggest to staff is that based upon our input today, they go back and, and just attempt to do maybe a tweak or two based upon our input and run that tweak by, I would say by Pam for sure, and maybe Rita, um, we don't all need to comment on it, right? And then come back next month then with a final recommended logo that both Pam and Rita have had a chance to at least look at ahead of time and then we can move forward. I like that but I'm going to call for additional comments one last time just to see if there was anybody else that wanted to jump in um, or if there's anybody else who'd like to be on that short list. Now's your time to speak up. Let's say Madam Chair, Commissioners, we can certainly just email it to everybody. Um, sure. Wait to hear back from uh, the two commissioners noted. Yeah, I, I think the whole group should go ahead and re-review it. Sure, why not? Okay, one last call for comments. And then was that a motion, Commissioner Pint? Uh, yes, I'd like to make that as a motion. Okay, then do we have a second? This is Commissioner Caselius. I'll second that motion. Commissioners, I will do roll. Commissioner Weaver? I. Oh. Commissioner Pitt? Aye. Commissioner Casilius? Aye. Commissioner Schmidt? Aye. And Commissioner Veerling? Aye. Thank you, Commissioners, very much. All right. Well, nice work, and please pass along our um, appreciation for the design to the designer, because I, I do really like it. Um, okay. I, 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 yes, go ahead. I'm sorry, just for clarification, what exactly was the motion? Because that's not very clear. <laughs> the motion was to take the remaining funds that we have or utilize some of those funds to make a few of these tweaks that we've suggested and then email out the group um, a potential change or a couple potential changes if they want us to look at a few. And then we will get you feedback. So Melissa, we'll take the word Scott and we'll just reformat it to, we'll do a version in the navy blue um, and we'll do a version, we can do a version with uh, uh, uppercase and lowercase uh, Scott. And then uh, also just one where we shrink down the word Scott a little bit and make it a little bit less. I keep saying formidable. I don't know, that's not probably the right word either, but you know, a little small. I just, I just wanted to make the motion clear for the record, yes. Okay. And you're the one that has to actually do the heavy lifting. So I think that's an appropriate request. Yeah, this question, I think I think you did a nice job, Vanessa, summarizing it. So it's 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 the color potential, it's the uppercase, lowercase potential, and the font size potential. Those are the three issues I think were brought up that could be addressed in any combination. Correct. I think we still need to do roll, correct? On that, Vanessa, or do we already do that? Oh, she just asked for clarification. So nothing changed. Okay. All right. Then do we have a motion to adjourn the meeting tonight? There's plenty of time for the uh, Vikings game. So. <laughs> <laughs> this is Commissioner Caselius. I motion to adjourn the meeting. Do we have a second? Commissioner Biggerling, I'll second that. His final second. Okay. Um, I will <laughs> be wrong. Commissioner and is, Weaver? Yes, and I will say that seems appropriate. The last one, very nice. Um, aye. Commissioner Pint? Aye. Commissioner Casilius? Aye. Commissioner Schmidt? Aye. And Commissioner Veerling? Aye. 
Thank you, commissioners. I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. I hope you all have a very wonderful holiday season as well. I always appreciate all the hard work that you do. Um, it really does make a, a literal difference in the water resources of the county and our lives as staff. And we do actually enjoy working for each and every one of you. So thank you. Great. And so no meeting in December, correct? Nope. You never have one in December uh, unless you change. Uh, you've made that change last year or the year before. So, okay. Just wanted to, to clarify. Yeah. And best of luck, Commissioner Veiling. Yeah. Thank you. I mm -hmm. hope to cross paths, I'm sure. Again. <laughs> yeah. Thanks so much, Mark. Don't be a stranger. Yeah. Absolutely, Matt. Have a good day. Thanks for your service. Yes. Thank you, Mark. Joe. Yeah.